my turn to speak about him and tell him about his place in my heart. After I lost Bob, and then six months ago to this very day, I have slowly been trying to let him go, let go of him. But it helps to say goodbye in this way. It's not only part of our culture, it's the way we try to deal with loss, the way we try to bring back memories from silence. I'm pleased that we're speaking about him today in this quiet place in the building we both knew so well. We both got our degrees here at UCLA. My psychology classes in the late 1940s were held in Waterfall, and this building became Bob's home away from home when we moved from New Haven to Los Angeles in 1980. We came after Bob accepted the Allen Carter Chair in Higher Education. And it was home for him for all the many years afterwards until he retired in 19. As I wondered what I could say at a ceremony like this, how I could tell you about my loss and about how much God meant to me, I recall a letter I wrote some years ago to a friend to console him after his having lost his wife. I told him about Elizabeth Bishop, the American poet. speaks about loss in her very wistful poem, One Art. The art of losing is a hard to master, she writes at the end of each stanza. After telling us all about the things that we lose, we lose keys, we lose places, we lose names, we lose houses, we lose hours badly spent. But she said, we do get over losing them. They weren't disasters. And at the end of the poem, she tries to assure us that just like those other losses, when we lose someone we care about deeply, we will get over it as easily. Well, I didn't believe her, even if she did try to make a good argument for it. And she clearly did not believe it herself. But a couple of circumstances did help me just a bit to come to terms with losing her. Both centered on the alliance between us. The first thing that happened had to do with my reading the last paragraph of a recent review of our 2008 book on higher education. It was sent to me by the publisher. <coughs> Let me quote what the reviewer said. Perhaps one of my favorite aspects of this anthology is that Clark put it together with the help of his wife. The two have been partners for decades. I, too, have written with my husband and cherished his feedback and support. It was endearing to see Clark acknowledge the person who had been his muse for so many years. Not only are Clark's essays hard work and intellectual curiosity a lesson for all of us, but his care for his partner in life is something for which we should all strive. Well, those words stunned me. This was the first time anyone had put into writing such praise for how we lived and worked together, how our intellectual friendship was such a primary ingredient in our lives. Those sentiments expressed something I always took for granted. I always did what came naturally. I shared ideas with him. I helped him. I encouraged him. And as the days passed, I realized those very links between Bob and myself she wrote about will persist on some small level in a very active way. People all over the world still ask about his work and want help in searching out his publications. So becoming involved with them softens the finality of losing him. The second thing that happened to blunt the loss were the condolence notes that kept coming in. I read one from a colleague who wrote about how important a role Bob played in his professional life. But he also said, that his links with Bob were links with Adele. Another wrote that one of the pleasures of getting to know Bob was spending more time with both of us. So I saw that the friends we had cultivated together were returning that affection. Bob always wanted me to be part of his world. He would not have been surprised at the outpouring of warmth and support. 
I can see that the closest of friends and colleagues, too, will make losing him easier for me. We had a beautiful marriage that lasted 60 years. He was easy to live with. His manner, I would characterize it as unassuming, kind, usually good tempered. <laughs> went a long way to make our relationship a happy one. He also had an incredible way of making me feel special and supported. He understood my insistence on being a person separate from him with my own ideas and, doing, and ways of doing things. But I was always grateful to him for letting me just be myself, even though saying that today is probably not considered all cool wrong. But the space and security he gave me allowed me to carve out an identity. He made it possible for me to find my way in this veil of soul making, as Keats would have it, instead of in a veil of tears. Bob would laugh now if he heard me say these words. Keats or no Keats, he didn't much concern himself with soul talk. And he, he was amused when Others applied the word to universities, as someone once did at a UNESCO conference in Paris when referring to, quote, the soul of the university. But I can attest whether he would agree or not that he was a very Apollonian, rational person who nevertheless, nevertheless had a soul. We trusted each other, we took care of each other, and we shared so many pleasures. His kindness, his encouraging ways, his habits of contentment were always very pleasing to me, as was his ability to endure troubles with a calm persistence and good cheer, as others have mentioned. And toward the end, as I tried to attend to his nearly every single want, he also tried to make things as easy as possible. Even though his body betrayed him, his spirit just did not die. That is as long as the bad dish of vanilla ice cream every day. <laughs> so, yeah, ice cream has been mentioned lots of times today. Bob was always intrigued by William James's concept of the necessity of having an absorbing air, as Anne mentioned. But I'm not sure he knew that James also said that the great use of life is to spend it on something that outlasts it. With that, I know he would have agreed. I feel very proud indeed that I was part of that something, that we did it together. What else is there to say? Even though Elizabeth Bishop and the Stoics may have implied that the sense of loss is a delusion, and that with practice one can train oneself in the art of losing, I am immeasurably grateful for how you all have helped to soften the blow for me. I want to thank the speakers for what you have said about Bob, and to thank you all and them for coming today. You have truly honored his memory. I do so appreciate what you have done to inspire and assist him in his work and his life. And from the bottom of my heart, I am so very grateful for all the warmth and affection and loving thoughts you continue to pass along to me. This memorial has given me much deep satisfaction, even for at least a fleeting moment joy. Thank you all.